Today I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit about the, dual, the advantages of dual polarity antennas in high density environments. We are a Texas based company so no presentation would be complete without some reference to cattle in some form or fashion. So in Texas terms, three cows do not equal a high density application. This on the other hand is a high density application, multiple clients, that type of thing. So on the left hand side you'll see um, non-HDA placement for general coverage uh, in many applications, uh, carpeted office space, those types of things. Um, on the right hand side it's more of a high density uh, deployment, um, tighter beam widths, tighter patterns, um, those types of things for um, auditoriums or, or arenas or any sort of high density um, location. So your design is uh, design plan will help you select the appropriate antenna solution uh, for what you need. Um, uh, still a high, uh, high number of uh, applications are um, omni-driven, uh, but more and more applications are being driven by uh, high density deployment, more client devices on the, on the network. So some common installation architectures for HD, um, there's a, uh, some of the more common ways are catwalk or ceiling where you can actually utilize a patch design um, which gives you, um, um, typically they're higher, higher gain antennas, uh, which equals smaller beam widths, uh, more AP uh, density and smaller cells. Um, higher ceilings typically require higher gain, uh, not all the time, uh, not necessarily 100% uh, of the time either. Um, there are wall and pole mount options. Um, the nice thing about patch antennas is most of you know you, uh, RF is like herding cats. Um, so you really wanted to um, uh, capture that or at least steer that RF signal um, to your clients. So some benefits of having that um, when using patch antennas are you do have articulating mounts that come with them more often than not. Um, I know all of ours do. So you can actually, not only do you have the, the beam width um, characteristics of the actual antenna, but you, you can actually focus that beam width more so with the uh, degree markings on the um, articulating mount. Um, another high density deployment would be sort of an under seat or an auditorium. Uh, you might see this in uh, large public venues, uh, stadiums, those types of things. Um, usually using low gain omnis, using people in the uh, surrounding environment for, um, as an RF shield or barriers if you will. Um, does require some enclosures to protect the APs, those, that type of thing. So patch antennas offer a variety of options uh, for successful, as I mentioned earlier, articulating mounts for different degree markings. Um, mounts to different surfaces, wall pole, those types of things. Variety of gain and beam width options are a vital um, aspect in choosing the right antenna for your deployments. But wait, there's more to that. My mom, <laughs> that's my high school uh, talent show contest. My mom sent that to me. Um, patch antennas also offer uh, dual polarity. And uh, so what does dual polarity mean? Um, I was actually going to break into a little break dance, but uh, 90, a high percentage of patch antennas are vertically polarized. Um, and so if you take out, if you whip out, excuse me, the antenna element, traditionally antenna elements are vertically polarized on the bottom. Um, once, you, uh, once you dual pole, you either have a multiple elements of two, three, um, that actually just shift or rotate, if you will, the element to a horizontal factor. So you're going to have Think of a snake slithering across the ground as sort of the horizontal sine wave, and then the vertical sine wave is uh, more of an up and down like a serpent. So as you can see, here's the actual, if you can't see the antenna itself, you can see it on the screen. There's two vertical on the bottom and two horizontal at the top. On the back of the antenna, you'll also have the four connections, that which in most cases should be labeled H or V, so identify whether it's horizontally or vertically polarized. So the advantages of that in a dual pole, or excuse me, of a dual polarity antenna in a high density environment, the dual polarity reduces the amount of signal collision um, going out to the, to the field. Um, reduced signal collisions allow the radio to send and receive data faster and more efficiently to the actual client itself. Um, the, main, the, the main takeaway from that is dual polarity doesn't change anything on the actual radiation pattern itself. The coverage area it just simply modifies the way the signal, the sine wave, is traveling to the client device. Question for you. Does that mean you have to have symmetric patterns, or can you get dual polarity with asymmetric? Okay. They have to be somewhat symmetric. Um, 
Is that, well, I'm gonna leave that to my technical expert. <laughs> That's a $20 question. <laughs> so if, you, if you're looking at the actual select and write antenna, the, the, the horizontal plane itself, if you're, you, you look down at the pattern from, from above, it's the actual width of the pattern that you see. So if you're on a spec sheet, um, and you look at the, the, the H plane of the antenna, you're looking down at the width of it, uh, as you can see here. Now the V plane is gonna be a profile view of the actual signal itself, and it's gonna be the actual height of the said pattern. So, where do radiation patterns come from? Not from there. <laughs> Certainly Santa Claus isn't bringing them to us, and Amazon Prime can't even deliver radiation patterns. What Radiation patterns come from the Excel Tech's uh, antenna torture chamber. Um, I occasionally put my boss, Carter Burke, in there uh, just for kicks and giggles to have some fun with him, uh, tee him up a little bit. Um, when, you, when you actually test an antenna, you take each individual element by itself and test it um, in, the, in the actual chamber. You cannot take this whole antenna conglomerate and all four radiation elements and put it in a chamber to test it. You have to touch, test each one to, to verify the actual pattern that you're gonna see. And I'll show you on the, uh, on the next slide what that looks like on the spec sheet. So if you notice, we, we incorporate four different uh, beam patterns, if you will, on our spec sheet, which indicate each one of the four elements that you see on the actual antenna. So you'll see that there, there are four different colors. There's a green, red, blue, and orange. Um, those are all gonna be the different elements. Um, sometimes a, a manufacturer will just put a, a blended ver version of what that, um, what that radiation pattern looks like. It's somewhat accurate, but you get a little bit more, uh, uh, a better indication of what those patterns look like when you have all four shown. Um, this also shows that it would be 40 degrees, and somehow if you, re if you read that, what you're gonna see is that wherever this crosses the, or wherever the pattern itself, these four patterns cross the 3 dB line, it's gonna be, this is a 30 degree, obviously, and this is 30 degrees as well. It's about 20 degrees on each side, so it's about 40 degrees. It's a 40 degree beam with pattern. That's how you read a radiation pattern, but that's probably a 10 talk for some other time. And finally, uh, this year again, uh, last year we had some challenges giving away uh, uh, actual antennas. We had some challenges with uh, uh, security at the airports. You can ask UC about that. Um, I'm sure he talked quite a bit about it. You may have seen, seen it on Twitter. There's an antenna coupon in the in the back of the giveaway bag, um, on the, there's a little slot on the bag stuff, shoved down there with the Eka House stuff. Um, holler at me, let me know um, which antenna, uh, which make and model of uh, AP that you're gonna be using and we'll be able to send you out an antenna of your selection if you, if you want. Um, if you have questions, uh, concerns, as long as they're non-technical, you can feel free to reach out to me. Um, I only charge $20 per question. Um, Rich is a little bit more expensive resource. So he's charging uh, $50 per question. We do take checks and money orders. Um, but there's our contact information. And if you guys have any uh, other questions about anything or you want to take it offline, uh, give me a shout, let me know, and we'll be around all week. <laughs>